Well, thank you very much, uh, Timothy Kipunusu, back there in Broadcasting House. It is day two of the 28th Engineers Conference taking place here in Mombasa. And of course, as we have been take, saying, the theme for this year is accelerating sustainable economic development. And today we have heard from different speakers about what needs to be done to enhance engineering fraternity here in Kenya. Right now, I'm joined by some of the key officials or speakers during this meeting. And of course, just next to me is uh, the uh, Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of Transport, that is uh, Chris Obure. And uh, next to him is uh, Nathaniel. Matalanga engineer, he's the president of IEK and of course uh, engineer uh, Maingi. So I want to start with you, uh, uh, CES. Yes. You have discussed or you have highlighted some of the issues that the government is putting in place to help the engineering fraternity in this country to thrive. Would you repeat them kindly? Yes, we recognize the role that engineers play in uh, infrastructure development. And uh, we appreciate that infrastructure development is the driver to social economic development. And therefore, uh, we, we, we as, a, as, as government, as a ministry, are committed to ensuring that, the, we, that we provide a climate, an environment in which the, the, prof, the engineering profession can thrive so that it can make more meaningful con contribution to, 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 to economic development. All the infrastructure we have developed in this country, talk about dams, uh, water dams, we are talking about roads, we are talking about bridges, we are talking about airports, we are talking about uh, irrigation schemes and all the rest of it. The engineers are behind this. We cannot achieve anything without the role, of, uh, the, 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 the role played by engineers. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have a duty as government to ensure that uh, uh, we facilitate engineers to develop, gain experience, gain expertise in their respective areas so that they can uh, continue to drive uh, uh, construction of uh, in, 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 in infrastructure for social development. Mm -hmm. One of the issues that has been raised by the president of IEK is of course the participation of local contractors in local publicly funded projects. And uh, you, you, you lamented about the low number of uh, local farms who are getting this contract. What do you feel should be done to remedy this situation? Thank you very much. We are, uh, from the engineering fraternity are very excited today uh, to have His Excellency the President, ably represented by the Chief Administration Secretary, Honorable Chris Obure, attend our conference. This is our 28th uh, international conference and the first the Head of State has uh, given it, uh, come to attend. So we are very excited. Now the issue of uh, local content, it is very simple and we as engineers will recommend that um, uh, systems be put in place where we break down uh, the, 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 the size of the projects to manageable um, portions so that our local contractors, our local engineers uh, can manage to participate. When it is so huge, the requirements, uh, uh, we have not developed that capacity and that's why the local contractor and the local engineer is losing out. There is also these huge infrastructure projects that are um, uh, public um, private partnerships. The challenges we've had is that by the time uh, you uh, identify um, a private um, participant who has the money to bankroll the project, uh, we, most times is coming from outside. So we don't have uh, a chance to participate as local engineers in the formulation, in the design of these projects. Because by the time they come, by the time the contracts are signed, they have already been designed. So we've only um, struggled to participate at the supervision stage. But we will gain more um, um, exposure, the transfer of technology, if uh, our local engineers were also able to participate um, in the um, in the design and complete. The second thing which we are very excited and His Excellency has given us direction is a uh, little problem we've been having with the accreditation of engineering uh, um, programs in Kenya. His Excellency has given direction that the Ministry of, of uh, Transport uh, um, uh, uh, should, uh, should get um, uh, uh, work together with the Ministry of Higher Education and the Engineers Board of Kenya to ensure that uh, um, all uh, engineering programs that are taking place in Kenya are, can be accredited. And then we move uh, fast uh, as a country 
towards the signing of the Washington Accord to enable um, our engineers to be to get international recognition and be able to get work outside the country. I, I want to hear from this from uh, Engineer Mainge and being one of the senior most engineers in Kenya. Uh, are you of the opinion that um, the, 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 we have the required human capacity and core competencies in Kenya to deal with what we refer to as mega projects in this country? Thank you. I would say I'm lucky uh, first uh, to transgress through the engineering fraternity, being a member of the learned institution for engineers, also being associated with the Engineers Board of Kenya, the regulator of the engineering profession and practice, and the engineer themselves, and also Kenya Broadcasting Corporation who disseminate information to the public. One is an assurance that the Kenyan engineer well-trained, well-grounded, and uh, attained the level of professional engineer is competent enough to partake and do competently any work, any type of engineering work, uh, in this, not just in this country, but in this, in this world. What we need, perhaps, is to let the public know the need to use professional engineers and professional cadres in all that uh, they do uh, in terms of development of their projects and the cost savings that get in there because we do find that developers are normally at fault. They think they do not want to pay for professional advice, they want to pay for physical uh, structures and where they lose money is where professional advice and professional competence is not involved. So you as KBC, the media, advocate the need for professionalism. The costs from planning to completion of a project, the professional services will not cost more than 0.5% of the project costs. And it would save a lot, like we have seen in uh, many. And also something else that has been highlighted is uh, the fact that uh, when you look at the number of um, uh, qualified engineers in this, in this country, you are talking about almost 20,000 vis-a-vis the number of registered engineers. You are talking about almost uh, 3,000 something. So how do we encourage more qualified engineers to become members uh, or registered engineers? Well, the Engineers Board of Kenya and the Institution of Engineers of Kenya has now sensitized engineers from pupillage, you know, from the university to the practicing era to see the need for that competency. Again, it is by law that you know, to practice engineering, you've got to be registered by the Engineers Board of Kenya. We're happy that the message is getting across, and now registration yes. Yes. is not just uh, something not planned. It is planned all the year round. We have the panels of the specialists uh, meeting all the time, and the rate of registration or translation of engineers to professional engineers now is actually very high, and very soon we target to register more than 10,000 engineers, perhaps in the next uh, few years to come. Few minutes, eh? yes. And uh, in one minute, before we wind up, uh, it will be very fair just to also hear from the women's side. And I'm, we're joined by uh, um, Kalien Bu Chedid. Uh, she's the president of FAO. Uh, let's first of all hear from her. Uh, what do you make of this conference that brings together uh, almost 3,000 engineers uh, together? Okay. First of all, let me say that I am really delighted that the Institution of Engineers Kenya has been able to attract the highest level of government at this conference. This is so important. Engineers really are behind all the development agenda that we can think of and therefore uh, government must recognize this. We are talking about the registration of engineers here. You cannot run an economy without engineers and those engineers must be regulated. You cannot leave the running, uh, the implementation of engineering projects to people who have not been assessed by their peers. You must have competent practice and therefore it's very important that engineering is regulated in every country and this is one of the things that the Federation of African Engineering Organizations is really pushing. 
very well, uh, lead, uh, gentlemen. Oh, lastly, yeah, lastly. quickly because we have to to yeah. wind up. Lastly, you heard the president challenge the engineering co uh, fraternity. We want to increase the numbers of engineers. He said, in the whole of Africa, we, we landed the, in, in Africa, for example, we need an additional 2.5 million engineers mm -hmm. to be able to bring the countries of Africa to the level required. In Kenya, you know, a professional engineers register is a mere 2,500 at the moment. Yeah. We need these numbers increased, more especially the women uh, engineers. We need more and more of them. And this is why the president is appealing even to students in primary schools and secondary schools to pay greater attention to subjects that will lead them to, 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 to engineering profession. Thank you very much indeed. And of course, I'm very sure they have, they have heard from you. Thank you. Gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much indeed for your time. You. Well, you have heard it from the engineers. We are live from here from the coast. And of course, we'll be giving you daily updates on what is happening here. Timothy Kipanusu, 